One of the most anticipated movies of the fall for me personally is Machete, Robert Rodriguez's well, film. I mean, um, I think part of that's just because the, the fall looks like it's going to be kind of crappy. But well, and it's also the fall is that one time where all the good movies you don't really know what yeah. they are because they're all original so, ideas. The so kind that, of that being said, Machete does look fun. Yeah, Machete looks very fun. Uh, very interesting cast, and it's being spun off of Grindhouse. It's based on the fake trailer mm-hmm. that was in front of Planet Terror. And so what we're going to do is look back on the saga that was Grindhouse, or maybe wasn't because it was such a big bomb. <laughs> yeah, I mean it cost fifty million dollars to make, and I think it made half of that. Yeah. Um, came out Easter 2007. I was there opening day. I was, I was excited. I was sitting there waiting for the greatest movie I had ever seen because it was Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino doing a double feature of cheesy horror movies. Uh, I mean, I feel like, you know, I thought it would be fun. I, I didn't uh, think it was going to be the best movie ever. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was a grindhouse movie. Mm. That's what it was. It was sort of supposed to be cheesy. So I, I, I kind of took it with that sort of mentality going in. Um it was long, I will say that. I mean, that <laughs> sort of comes with the double feature. I hear some people didn't realize there's a double feature and left halfway through, which yeah, is kind of sad. And it's like, the movie never stopped. It's like, okay, you got Machete trailer, Planet Terror, and then there were three fake trailers playing. There, there was yeah, an intermission, yeah. but Thanksgiving, they, people got uh, up and left. Thanksgiving, Werewolf Women of the SS, and Don't yep. were the fake trailers. And I guess, so what did you think overall of Grindhouse? Because I obviously didn't make that much money. America didn't fall in love with Grindhouse. I mean, I'm <laughs> but, probably in the minority in that I enjoyed um, Planet Terror more is sort of embracing the kind of idea of it. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, it's, I, I've argued this with people, which one's more of the grindhouse kind of film, mm. but I kind of enjoyed sort of Planet Terror in that capacity more in the sort of experience. I mean, Death Proof is probably just a better cohesive film by itself, mm. but Planet Terror I thought was more sort of fun in that atmosphere. Okay, okay, so overall is Grindhouse. What did you think of the whole I the product it. with the trailers and everything? I liked it. Yeah. I definitely I I, I thought it was uh it, it it did what it set out to do. Mm. Whether that was embraced by America, clearly not. Yeah. But it did what it set out to do and I like that. Mm-hmm. That was sort of what I was I, looking uh, for. I also, I liked it. I was disappointed. Granted, I had high expectations, but when it's two of the biggest directors of modern times, not only that, but like indie darling, genre loving directors, which I'm well, always I mean, partial to. Just that. I mean, if you factor in like the trailer people, you got Edgar Wright, Eli Roth. Uh, Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie. Um, At the time, you know, we didn't know. <laughs> I knew. I knew. Devil's Rejects, come on. I knew. <laughs> I knew. Um, but yeah, and I, so I thought it was okay. I, too, when I first saw Grindhouse, was let down. I liked Planet Terror more than Death Proof, although overall I thought it was it was just, you know, pretty good. Um, I thought Death Proof was like the worst Tarantino movie by far that I had seen. Um, I thought the trailers overshadowed everything. Uh, as we talked about last week when we were talking to Eli yeah. Roth, Thanksgiving was my favorite trailer, but I loved all of them. I thought Machete looked pretty fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, Machete the was really fun I mean, as well. I don't, I'm curious to see how um, how much the fake trailer actually sort of corresponds with the finished movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looks like there are some differences and stuff, yeah. but I mean, it looked like a fun one too. I gotta say that. Yeah, and actually, it's kind of interesting. It just showed maybe that whole like we're gonna to do a faux grindhouse thing at least from what we saw in the features maybe it worked best as the trailers because i don't know about for you like obviously overall the product was pretty good but the trailers were such a high yeah. that i was like maybe this is the best way to do grindhouse throwback is in these nice little nuggets well i mean i mean it, i mean we'll obviously see from the machete movie yeah um but, i mean but at the same time like uh you think back uh like tropic thunder one of the most fun parts of tropic thunder was the fake previews in front of tropic thunder yeah no that's true and i would say that was the best part of tropic thunder <laughs> ouch <laughs> yeah i didn't like tropic thunder <laughs> that's uh that's going into a different topic yeah. uh movies that everyone loved but i hated um but then grindhouse had kind of a interesting controversial release pattern where the wine scenes were just like desperate to make a buck off this thing yeah. so instead of releasing grindhouse on dvd as it was they put out the two movies separately Separately on extended version DVDs and Blu-rays without any of the fake trailers. Uh, Machete is attached to Planet Terror, so you still got that, but well, you got none of the other three. I think the philosophy for that was that they thought the Quinn Tarantino one would make more money by itself. I don't think they thought the Robert Rodriguez one might necessarily be a big seller, mm. but they, they thought that they could people would buy a new Tarantino movie. Well, just yeah. the Tarantino. Mm-hmm. They won't. They won't have to like wade through Planet Terror necessarily, mm. but they would be willing to buy just Planet. Terror. Yeah, and that's something. Certain. That annoys me. Obviously, I can understand that. They were trying to make money. They lost so much on it. But that's also like maybe you don't spend, you know, $50 million on something that's a throwback to $10 movies. Yeah. Um, But it just annoyed me. Like, I mean, the same time. When a movie comes out, 
it need, it should be released on home video but, in I mean, its original format. If you think, if you think about it, fifty million dollars for two movies plus a bunch of trailers. That's pretty. I mean, that's pretty budget fiscal. I mean, they really got a lot of money out of very. Nowadays they did, but the movies they were emulating were made for right. thousands right. of agreed, dollars. Agreed. You know? I mean, agreed. <laughs> um, and they didn't have Bruce Willis in them and stuff right. like that. True. Um, but with these extended versions, you did get something interesting where people sort of realized, at least for me personally, Planet Terror doesn't work on its own. Really, Planet Terror really has to be a part of Grindhouse. In rewatching it as the extended version, I was right. like, no, okay. I, well, I mean, I th- I, I as I said, I thought that was like really they embrace the experience of the original concept. Mm. Um, and it's it's I mean, it's hard to sort of just take that out and be like, this movie by itself is sort of so so or whatever, because mm. it's really meant to be experienced in that sort of atmosphere. I mean, that's true. So it's, it's this interesting thing that happened because Planet Terror does you know go into that. Oh, it it really only worked in that grindhouse setting, but then Death Proof is much better in the extended version. I actually would say yeah. kind of the only version you should watch of Death Proof is the extended yeah. version because it ties the two halves of the movie together. That was a big complaint a lot of people had, myself included, uh, was that the first group of characters was much more interesting than the second group and you kind of, once you're, this, this whole setup happens and you get this some great action, all of a sudden the movie starts over and you have to go through all the introduction again. Um, but it does, the extended version adds in scenes that does a good job of bridging that gap and it does it through showing more of the stuntman Mike character, which yeah. I liked because um, Kurt Russell was the best part of it. No, I mean, I, th- I think that's all true. And I mean, I guess we should talk about Machete a little bit. Yeah, since exactly. That's what's coming out. I think one of the things that initially popped out to me most when I was looking into this was that uh, Robert Rodriguez shares the directing credit with Ethan Manikees, mm-hmm. um, who uh, has been on his editing staff yeah. since Desperado. So and it's sort of an interesting close, thing. I mean, he did this before with Sin City and Frank Miller. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this is clearly. Uh, Robert Rodriguez is one to push people oh. into the spotlight. He does a really good job of like mm-hmm. supporting people. Oh, totally. He does. It doesn't need to be all about him. Because if you think yeah. about it, this is a perfect like. Robert, if Robert Rodriguez was like, I'm doing machete, people would be like, All right, that makes sense, you know. But he's like, You know what? And my buddy's gonna help me out. I want him to have a directing career. I mean, it, 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 you know, it, who knows the behind the scenes? But I think it's a good thing. I mean, as you said, it'll be. It'll, I mean, unless it'll, it's bad. We'll obviously have to wait <laughs> and see if it's able to sort of be successful in itself, or if it Grindhouse is really just a trailer kind of thing. But I mean, it looks. It looks looks fun. Yeah, definitely looks uh, fun. It's got I, a good cast. I would say I am more excited about the cast in Machete than I was about like the cast in Expendables, which is like everyone was like, just this crazy cast. Who imagined they would all be together? Okay, uh, riddle me this. Why, how would a movie exist where Lindsay Lohan, Robert De Niro, and Steven Seagal are in the cast list? Yeah, that I mean, is amazing. It's, it's amazing, but at the same time, <laughs> Like, I don't like Michelle Rodriguez that much. I don't like Lindsay Lohan that much. Um, you got, like, a, what is it, Nash Bridges reunion with Don Johnson <laughs> and Cheech Marin. Just kind of nifty. I mean, that's funny. I like Jeff Fahey. And, yeah. like, Robert Rod, or, uh, Robert De Niro. That's so cool. I kinda, I kinda, Robert De Niro. <laughs> I, Steven I mean, Seagal. I mean, it just, I, I don't see how this all sort of cohesives together is the one concern. Mm. I think that it'll be fun, but I just, I don't see how these people all sort of fit together. Like, mm. Lindsay Lohan and Robert De Niro fundamentally pretty much should not be in a film together <laughs> but that's i think and it's a crazy action movie i'm excited about that ridiculousness um i think it'll be cool danny trejo i think is yeah, awesome I i've loved Dave... him ever since you know the little bit parts in like as a villain in desperado I mean, still dawn I mean... um you know it's about time he was starring in a big wide release movie and i guess time will just show if america is gonna embrace a spinoff of a failure <laughs> and i just want to throw this out nimrod antal director of predators Small little part in this film. Really? Yeah, that's interesting. Booth's bodyguard number one. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Considering no one knows what he looks like, that'll be hard. Um, and then I guess we should talk about some of the other trailers have been rumored to be spun off as well. Eli Roth has talked a lot about Thanksgiving, which I think would be a lot of fun. Yeah, we talked about um, that last week. And then Werewolf Women of the SS, Rob Zombie put up some you know, poll on his website like, oh, which movie do you want me to make next? And that was listed as one of them, along with Devil's Rejects 2, which makes no sense if you've seen Devil's Rejects. Um, but uh, so he's interested in maybe pursuing that as a film. And... I don't know. Don't was really kind of embraced the whole jokey aspect. There's not I, really a movie I, I, to be had from yeah, Don't. I don't, I don't think that. <laughs> Although I, it was a lot of fun. I don't like Rob Zombie. I don't think he should make that film. I just don't think he should be making films, period. Um, <laughs> we'll see but, what happens after his blob movie it, without a blob I mean, in it. Eli Roth, I think, yeah, as we said, Thanksgiving's the one to make. Mm-hmm. Besides Machete, which has already been made. So yeah. I guess that... It yeah, is. it wraps up Grindhouse. Let us know what you think. We too hard on it. I know a lot of the horror community like put it in their best of the decade list, and I was like, "What?" Wow, that's a little. <laughs> that's a little. 
high. Yeah. <laughs> MacGuffinPodcast.com. Let us know which trail of those remaining ones. Would you like to see Rob Zombie? Please tell me you don't. <laughs> but if you do, I would like to know why I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because it's Werewolf Nazis, I will give them that. Even if it's Rob Zombie's Werewolf Nazis, it's Werewolf Nazis. John likes Nazis.